Some people call this concoction of beeswax and mineral oil sanding butter, sanding paste, uh, wood paste. Uh, if you're interested in, in knowing how to easily and quickly and inexpensively make this, keep watching. Hi y'all, I'm Mike Peace and I'm passionate about wood turning and I'm here to share with you tips, tricks, techniques and projects that will help you become a better wood turner. If it's something you're interested in, please consider subscribing and ring the notification bell so you won't miss future episodes. I want to give this shout out to Sam Angelo the Wyoming wood turner for showing his, his process for making this sanding butter. In last week's video on wet sanding, I showed you how you could use various lubricants to wet sand, including this, uh, this sanding butter, and today we're going to make some. In last week's video, I showed you the basic elements of wet sanding, including how to use sanding butter, so today let's, let's make some. So what do you need to make it? Well, obviously the first thing you got to have is you got to have some beeswax. Next, you need mineral oil. Obviously, you need some type of containers to put your concoction in, and lastly, of course, you need a you need a set of uh, you need a set of postal scales or or food scales, and then lastly, you need some type of safe way to melt these ingredients together. Let's start with beeswax. If you know a beekeeper, you can uh, likely get beeswax from them. Uh, you might want to consider taking a uh, small wood turning uh, gift with you if they're a friend. You can also buy a craft store, uh, buy beeswax from a craft store like Hobby Lobby or Michaels. I have a link to my Amazon shop in the video description below where you can also get a pound of either beeswax pellets or a bar, and they're about the same price. Beeswax pellets are easy to melt and they save you the trouble of cutting into small chunks. Now the other ingredient, uh, mineral oil, I believe they call this liquid paraffin overseas, is basically a uh, derivation of, of petroleum. In the simplest of terms, it could be described as a highly refined uh, edible lubricating oil. As such, it does not dry when it's applied to wood. Why mineral oil? Well, mineral oil is soluble in all petroleum-based thinners and turpentine, and any finish that uses these same solvents can be put over it. Lacquer, shellac, varnish, drying oils will absorb uh, any mineral oil that's already in the wood in the new finish and there'll be no there should be no adhesion problems but it doesn't come with, it, it comes it doesn't come with with a guarantee uh, another reason for mineral oil is it's relatively inexpensive and lastly it's green that is there's no volatile organic compounds like mineral spirits here's the steps we're going to go through first if you buy your beeswax in, in pellets you can save this effort but you're going to cut the wax into small chunks or use a cheese grater if you're not using pellets. You can get a simple cheese grater at the dollar store but cutting it with a knife also works. You're going to weigh out your ingredients. A typical recipe and the one I use calls for one part beeswax melted into four parts mineral oil by weight. Notice I say by weight. A reasonable container size is eight ounces. Now mineral oil has a lower specific gravity uh, than beeswax. That is, it's less dense. So it actually takes about 1.188 liquid ounces of mineral oil to equal one ounce of mineral oil by weight. So let's do some math. The final mixture, let's say the final mixture is going to be eight ounces. Well, 20% of the mixture is beeswax by weight using our one to four ratio. So eight ounces of the final solution times 20% yields 1.6 ounces of beeswax we're going to need. The concoction also needs 80% mineral oil by weight using our 1 to 4 ratio. 8 ounces times 80% is equal to 6.4 ounces mineral oil by weight. Okay, we're going to weigh out the ingredients by weight. I generally put the uh, beeswax on a piece of wax, wax paper and, and disregard the weight of the wax paper as being insignificant. I'm using some postal scales, but perhaps you have some food scales. Uh, the digital scales work very nicely, and after they uh, come on, the first thing you got to do, if you're going to use a container, for example, to mix your mineral oil, you're going to change, you're going to set what's called a tear on it, or a tear weight, by pushing the button, and that basically uh, eliminates the weight of this in your measurement. Now you can pour in your 6.4 ounces of, of mineral oil, and uh, and it won't be weighing weighing the cup. 
Now, six, multiply the required 6.4 ounces of mineral oil by weight times the specific gravity of mineral oil, uh, or 1.188 uh, actually, that's probably not the specific gravity. It's the amount it takes to to equal one ounce by weight. This will give you 7.6 liquid ounces to equal 6.4 ounces by weight. Use this approach to scale up your ingredients for a larger batch. Now, you're going to mix all your ingredients together uh, and, uh, and, and heat it up in, until it melts, melt, continuing to stir it. You can use a double boiler, that is, a container inside really a large pot with water on the bottom and sides. It fits the into the rim of the, of the bottom of the pan. The in use, the top pan is heated by steam from the boiling water in the bottom pan. A water bath helps, keep, uh, helps heat up things evenly. You don't want the container containing the wax to actually sit on the bottom of the larger container without water under it or it might get too hot. I prefer to use a slow cooker also known as a crock pot. It works well and it's safer than heating over an open flame. I picked up a quart size at the thrift store for less than four dollars. A crock pot works well in your shop and it gets the whole process out of the kitchen. This can be a good thing unless your partner doesn't mind and is willing to help. To the uh, mineral oil. This crock pot I don't think gets much hotter than 212 so it's a very safe way to uh, to melt this. There's no open flame. Uh, easy to to do it in your shop without the need of a hot plate or propane or a camp stove or anything. Uh, you can probably pick these up at a, a thrift store for little or nothing. Now a few common sense rules. Never leave the wax unintended as it melts. Don't bring the water to a rolling boil if using a double boiler and don't allow the double boiler to become completely dry at any point during the process. The beeswax melts at around 145 to 147 degrees Fahrenheit that is 63 to 64 degrees Celsius. Do not allow it to exceed temperature beyond 160 to 170 degrees Fahrenheit, 71 to 77 degrees Celsius. Since the beeswax could then take on a dark hue and it's lose its aroma past this point. Now you could use a uh, cooking thermometer to monitor the temperature of your beeswax as it melts, but I've not found this to really be necessary as long as you're melting slowly and continuing to stir it and then you remove it from the heat after it is fully melted. So as long as you stop heating the mixture past the point of the beeswax melting, this is a pretty safe process. Uh, don't get burned. Wear mitts or gloves when you're lifting the hot uh, crock pot to, to pour. Pour immediately after it melts completely and let it cool before you're putting the lid on the containers. Now what are you using for containers? Well, you can use old butter bins or old plastic containers with a tight fitting lid. I picked up a pack of five eight ounce containers at the dollar store. You can get a batch of these two ounce containers for about a dollar. I also use a small threaded box to carry in my toolbox. I've seen other YouTube videos where they've used large mouth mason jars to put their paste wax in. Not in my shop. Murphy's Law says that what can go wrong will go wrong. I'll eventually knock any glass container in my shop to the floor. You could use baby oil, and baby oil is nothing but uh, scented mineral oil. It generally costs more, but if you have some on hand, feel free to use it. You can also use this concoction on cutting boards. Have you had any experience making your own uh, sanding paste? If so, I'd like to hear from, from you in the comments below. Some people have expressed concerns about this solution, uh, uh, being able to put lacquer over it. Frankly, I don't have any personal experience with that, but I've got it from a good source that uh, again, any type of petroleum-based solvent, uh, including lacquer, shellac, uh, mineral oil, uh, uh, antique oil, tongue oil, will all work over top of, of uh, mineral oil. If you've had any personal experience to the contrary, I'd be interested in hearing about it, especially if you have a solution. In my next video, I'm going to explain how we can make some sanding abrasive or or liquid uh, liquid sandpaper. If you like this video, please give it a uh, a thumbs up. Y'all stay safe and come on back here.